Western topic uh, to refer to Sister Asia Hunter. God bless you. Uh, we're talking about spirits that roam the earth. I've been teaching about this all week. Um, when people die and they, you know, they decease, do their spirit roam the earth? There are people who said they saw their lost loved one coming to them in a dream or a vision. Uh, they heard their deceased mother tell them, I love you, I'm okay. And there's others who said they've been haunted. Others, they said they saw their deceased father. Uh, actually, one time, uh, I know my wife asked me a long time ago, uh, she asked me the other day, you know, my father died when I was three years old. And she asked me, um, did I ever see my father in the spirit? And I said, no, but it came to my mind. I did see a spirit of my father. He came with this um, white looking Indian outfit. He had a long stick. So the question, he came in right in my room, but it startled me. I was, I was afraid and then he disappeared. So the question is, are these spirits real? Are these are uh, the spirits are of our deceased loved one? Well, let's get into the word of God. Uh, let's go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 28. We know people go to mediums and they do seances to try to contact their deceased loved one and their deceased mother or grandmother. That's why it's always good to show love to your mother or your grandfather, whoever is in your family, why they can smell the flowers. Don't wait till after they die and know you did them wrong and now you're crying over the casket because you know you're crying out of guilt. So now you want to go run into a seance and, and now they uh, kind of contact your deceased well, loved one and say, oh, let's hold hands together. And they're going all like this, and they're like the spirit is coming to their body, and, 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 and now that you think it's your deceased loved one who's talking through the seance woman, well, let's go to the Bible. When Saul went to the wicks of Endor in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 28, Saul, who God has already rejected to be king, amen, the spirit of the Lord came to David. You already know the story. Now here, this is before Saul lost the war against the enemies, the army who was against Israel. God was no longer with Saul. As long as God was with the king, God gave him favor and they won wars. But this particular one, Saul renewed that he could not get a prayer through because the Spirit of the Lord has already departed away from Saul. It went to David. He put a hit on David to try to kill David, but he couldn't do it. David had many times to kill Saul, but he didn't do it. He still respected him as being God's anointed one even though he knew in his heart that God was no longer with Saul. Saul was jealous of David. So here, uh, they was about to battle this particular army. So he, he he couldn't get a prayer through. You know, it's bad when you can't get a prayer through when it's Ichabod, when the Spirit of the Lord is no longer with you. Honey, I want God's Spirit to be with me. I want His presence to be with me. And as long as I obey God, God will bless. According to Deuteronomy chapter number 28, you read the whole chapter. So here, Saul went to this wicks of Endor. Because you know, Samuel already had passed away, he already had died. So he tried to consult this man's spirit to <laughs> try to get this man to give him favor, give him his blessings. Samuel was already against Saul when he was alive because God was angry at Saul. He said rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. He was supposed to kill the whole city of devil worshippers and he didn't do it. He spared the king who was wicked. So God was angry. So Saul has already passed away. So here he went to this wicks of Endor, who was supposed to be a medium, a, a seance, to try to contact Saul's ghost. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. This is how it looks like. Saw that's a witch of indoor. You can tell she's a witch. Look at them Count Dracula looking teeth. No, no. Taking your kingdom, and 
intended for David. Now he has left you to the Philistines. Now, tomorrow, you and your sons will be with me. No! Okay, now that now that was in the Bible. Let's go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 28. Okay, that's a bad position to be in. God has left Saul because he was a beggar. Now, the question is, was that Samuel? Okay, or was that a demon who came in the form of Samuel? That's a good question, right? Now, that was a seance. Now, he went to a witch of Endor to summon the prophet Samuel's spirit. Now, people may say it was a demon who came in the form of Samuel, and well, we're going to find out right now. I'm going to give you the answer right now, because uh, people have went to seances like this to summon, a, to summon a deceased loved one. The question is, now that was the only act of seance that we've seen in the Bible that I know of was in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 28, as you saw already. The witch of Endor summoned this spirit. Now watch this. Someone said, was that a, uh, someone said, was that that was a demon who came in the form of Samuel. Well, look at this. The witch did not bring forth a demon. Okay? I can understand your confusion about this. How could she call up the soul of Samuel? Uh, for he was a worthy servant of God. Wouldn't Samuel be with the Lord? Mm, that's deep. The man of God left this comment right here. And we're going to get to the answer. I'm going to elaborate on that. For he was a worthy servant of God. Wouldn't Samuel be with the Lord? True. Well, now this was before the resurrection of Christ. Mm, that's deep. Before this, all souls, good and evil, went below the earth. The Old Testament word for the abode of the dead is Sheol, which is spelled S-H-E-O-L. It is a derived, as most scholars think, from a word meaning hollow. To the Hebrew mind, Sheol was simply the state of a bowl of the dead. It was not the same as the grave. Mm. Though it was so translated in some of the older versions, now there were two chambers of Sheol, paradise and haze. So watch this. That means Samuel was called up from paradise. Mm, that's deep. That's deep. Let's go even a little further. He mean he was called up from paradise. It means just what it said. So in this case, this was not a demon that came in the form of Samuel. Mm, this is deep. We're going to get further. So the question is, so was that really Samuel? You said spirits don't roam the earth. The other teaching I did was that when you saw your, your deceased loved ones, there was demons that came in their form. But in this particular case, this was not a demon. This was actually God who allowed the prophet Samuel, this is deep, to come. And let me tell you why. Watch this. Did the witch of Endor really summon Samuel from the dead? According to 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse number 7 to verse 20, the account of the witch of Endor summoning Samuel from the dead uh, is recorded in the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 28, verse 7 to verse number 20. It is the only biblical account of a seance. There are differences of opinion. Regarding the story, did, Sam, did Samuel himself truly appear? Good question. Was this an illusion perpetrated by the witch? Or was it a demonic deception? King Saul's encounter with the witch of Endor took place at the very end of the reign as king. As his reign of, as king, the Philistines had arrayed themselves for battle against Israel. Mm, this is getting deep. This is getting deep. My God, this is towards his end of the reign. They arrayed themselves themselves for battle against Israel and Saul. Saul was afraid. Terror filled his heart. According to First Samuel chapter twenty-eight, verse five, Samuel was dead. So Saul sought direction from the Lord through other means. Mm. But the Lord did not answer him. He was in a bad position right there. The Lord did not answer him by dreams or Urim or prophets. God silenced 
was a consequence of Saul's disobedience against God. In verse number six, having no word from God, Saul sent his servants to find a medium. I just showed you that a couple of seconds ago. And they told him on uh, one in the town of Endor, that was a witch, according to 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 7, Saul had previously expelled all the spiritualists and mediums. Now, he expelled these people. Saul did this. Saul has previously expelled all the spiritualists and the mediums from the land, according to verse 3. Now, obviously, some remain. We know God is against mediums. He's against witchcraft work. He's against witches. According to Exodus chapter 22, verse 18, read it. According to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, read it. But some apparently has remained. There was some, some were still around. By divine law, mediums and spiritualists were banned from Israel, according to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 11, that the king in desperation would seek wisdom from an occult witch source, from a cult source that he himself had outlawed, shows his hypocrisy. The hypocrite it indicates how far he had fallen from God's grace. Uh, he knew it was right. He's the one that banned it, but he was a hypocrite. He went and consulted a witch anyway. King Saul fasted all day, disguised himself, and visited a witch of Endor. And two of his servants, Saul, told her, consult a spirit for me. Mm. And bring up for me the one I named. First Samuel chapter 28, verse 8. This is getting deep. The woman, weary of a trap, balked at the request. Saul swore an oath. A promise that she would not be punished. Verse 10, he indicated that he wished to speak to Samuel. During the seance, the prophet appeared. Mm. When the woman saw Sam Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice. Ah! You saw it already when I showed you. And saw and said to Saul, why have you deceived me? You saw that when I just showed you. You are Saul. Verse 12. Saul, who did not see what the woman saw, told her not to be afraid. And to describe what she saw, 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 13, the witch said, I see a ghostly figure coming up out of the earth. Further describing as an old man wearing a robe, verse 13 to verse 14, then Saul knew it was Samuel. He bowed down, prostrate himself. With his face to the ground. Verse 14. Look at this. In the ensuing conversation, Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? You just saw that in the movie. First Samuel chapter 28, verse 15. The king explained about the Philistines and how God was no longer answering him. Verse 16. Samuel gave Saul a chilling message. Why do you consult me? Now that the Lord have departed from you, I don't want to sound spooky. He was a man of God. and become your enemy. The Lord has done what he predicted through me. That's when he was alive, before he died. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David. Because you did not obey the Lord or carry out his fierce wrath against the Amalekites. The Lord has done this to you today. Uh, that was scary. God was angry at Saul. The Lord would deliver both Israel and you into the hands of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons would be with me. Oh, the Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. What a chilling message to Saul. First Samuel 28, verse 16 to verse 19. Upon hearing his fate, Saul was afraid. Ah. Samuel, I don't want that to happen to me. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of an angry God. He was rebellious against God. You don't want God to turn his back on you. Watch this. The witch prepared a meal for Saul, who had not eaten all day. And she and Saul's two servants prevailed upon to partake of what was probably his last meal. You're going to die the next day. 1 Samuel 28, verse 20 to verse 25. The next day in battle, Saul and his sons died. Chapter 31. Felt sorry for Jonathan because Jonathan was the best friend of David. The passage does not give, try, check this out. The passage does not give any indication that the 
operation that this seos, the wicks of Endor, saw was anything other than Samuel himself. We know that the medium was not producing an illusion because she, what? Because she screamed and surprised. She was surprised when she sees Samuel. She was surprised. Why? Because it was not her familiar spirit that she usually summoned up to come in the form of someone's deceased loved one. She usually would come, summon up her familiar spirit, which is a demon spirit, to come in the form of a deceased loved one. But in this case, it was not her familiar spirit. That's why she was surprised. That's why she got scared. God allowed the prophet Samuel to be summoned from paradise, which is a place of peace, of garden. This was the only... Oh, and this seance was the only thing that was talked about in the Bible. Look at this. Also, the spirit rising from the earth is called Samuel. The text does not say that the spirit appeared to be Samuel or that the medium thought it was Samuel. The text directly refers to the spirit as Samuel. Further, the spirit spoke the truth. The message saw receive was accurate. It was the truth. The witch of Endor was lightly expecting to hear her familiar spirit, a demon, mm, doing the seance. And that explains her startled reaction to seeing Samuel. She was scared. She didn't expect this to happen. She saw Samuel. It seems that in this case, God allowed Samuel, the prophet, to return in order to give King Saul the news of his coming defeat and death. So God allowed his spirit to be summoned. God allowed this. It was not the wicks of Endor's familiar spirit. It was not a demon. In this case, I'm talking about. The story of the wicks of Endor summoning Samuel does not imply that seance are effective in conjuring the dead or that witches are mediums generally, generally speak that the spirits of the dead individuals when a person dies, his or her soul is taken to either heaven or hell. That's why I preached yesterday. There is no warning the earth. There's no wandering the earth, rather, conveying messages to the living or making return visits. See the book of St. Luke, chapter number 16, verse 19 to verse 31. Any claim of contact with departed loved ones is a demonic deception. Read the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 14 to verse 15. God condemned pneumocracy, which is spelled N-E-C, pneumocracy. That's right, pneumocracy. I, I said it right. N-E, which is spelled N-E-C-R-O-M-A-N-C-Y. Those, those are channeling of spirits and the works of mediums. And those who practice such things in ancient times and ancient Israel were put to death. According to Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27, read the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 18, verse 10 to verse 12. In Saul's case, now watch this, in Saul's case, going back to this, when Samuel was summoned, God allowed Samuel to return to pronounce a final judgment on the disobedience King Saul, who had refused to listen to Samuel, when the prophet was alive, simply sought a word from Samuel after he was dead. And that was part of why Saul was judged, according to 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13 to verse 14. See? So that in that case, it was the prophet Samuel. God allowed that. In other cases, if you go to a scene, a uh, seance, a mediums, and they try to contact your deceased loved one, that is not your loved one. Either they are in paradise or in hell. If they died in Jesus, they are in paradise or waiting for the resurrection when the rapture take place. When Jesus will come in the clouds, we will meet him in the air. Amen. Uh, the dead will be resurrected in a glorified body, in an immortal body. Praise God. They shall, the dead in Christ shall rise. We, are, we who are remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Ah, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So if you're going to mediums and sorcerers and uh, try to seances, try to contact deceased loved ones, that is a demon that's, who's coming in the form of your loved one. Even if they're saying good things, but it's, a, it's nothing but a deceiving 
spirit. So don't be deceived. So these spirits that's haunting people and roaming the earth and all this type of stuff, no, that is not God. Uh, if your mother and father love you, why would they want to haunt you? <laughs> if they love you, why would they want to haunt you in the house? Those are actually demonic spirits that's co who comes in the form of your grandmother or your father or your mother or your sister and brother who passed on because demons come to steal, kill, and destroy because demons are working for the devil. But thank God that Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. That when the body dies, it goes back to the dust. The spirit goes back to be with God. We are the soul. Praise God. The soul lives on. It either go to heaven or hell. Okay, the place of paradise is where they went. Remember when the rich man died? He went straight to hell. When the Bible said he lifted up his and in, in, in hell, he lifted up his eyes. Mm, he saw a gulf. He saw Lazarus the beggar, not Lazarus who the one Jesus rose from the dead after he was dead for four days. There was another Lazarus. He was a beggar who used to ask the rich man to feed him. The rich man never did that. He looked down on Lazarus. They both died. Lazarus went into Abraham's bosom. There was a gulf between paradise and hell. The Bible said, and the rich man lifted up his eyes in hell. He was tormented by the flames. He wanted Lazarus to come over and give him some water to cool his tongue. But God did not allow that. It was a gulf between paradise and hell. Okay, he was in Abraham's bosom. He was in the place of peace, which means the place of a peace. Praise God. So when the saints of God died, the Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. They go to a place of paradise, a place of peace, a garden, a beautiful place. Praise the Lord until they await um, that great day when the rapture take place and they'll rise again. But they'll be risen in a glorified body, in an immortal body. Bible said in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye. From mortal into mortality, we shall be changed. Okay, so these spirits that they talk about roaming around the earth and haunting people, and they feel it was the spirits of the deceased loved ones. I know I heard many cases like that. All right, but those are really demon spirits who are coming, who's coming in the form of your deceased loved one. Uh, if these people who had wicked spirits and they die without Jesus, it's probably the demons who inhabit them that's going around the haunting people. But either they are in hell, we don't want that to be, we don't want to think about that, but it's true. That's what the Bible declares, it's appointed for men once to die, but the end there is judgment. So it's important to receive Jesus in your life so you can have eternal life to be with Jesus Christ. The Bible declares in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For this is the promise that God has for you and your children. Okay, so it's important to have the Holy Spirit. Repent from your sins. That means to no longer live in sin. Stop. Turn away with godly sorrow. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he was crucified and God is raised from the dead and thou shalt be saved. For the mouth confessing is made into salvation and with the heart man believes unto righteousness that whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay, Romans chapter number 10, verse number 9 and verse number 10. Praise God. So I hope that answered your questions and we're going to have more uh, topics and discussions on this. Okay? So I'll see you again. We're going to discuss. Thank you for all your comments that you left on YouTube. Praise God for the Prince of Peace. Me and my wife, Lady Priscilla, been praying for you. And thank you for praying for us. Okay? But the best spirit is to receive. is a gift of the Holy Ghost. Like they did on the day of Pentecost. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. The Greek word for power is dunamis. They received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Ah, uh, praise be the name of Jesus Christ. Ah, uh, thank you. Something about the Holy Ghost. Ah, uh, praise God for the Prince of Peace. It's something about the Holy Ghost. Praise God for Jesus Christ. It's something about the Holy Ghost. Can nobody love you like Jesus? Can nobody do you like Jesus? Praise God for the Prince of Peace. 
the Holy Ghost sat upon each of them, and they was all filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues, diversity of tongues, cloven tongues, as the Spirit of God gave out of it. So just sitting here, just relaxing, and we're going to see you again. God bless you. Your friend, the gospel, street pastor, preacher Warren. God bless you.